a state of essential simplification, safe in numbers, recipient of an unnoticed demand, complicit, choosing not to choose, compliant and therefore enraged, unwitting double agent, blended into a selected background, committed to difference and by it, horrified by the idiosyncrasy of desire, uniformly agreeable, accurate, diligent, wired for surprise, consensus as spell, morning variety, idealist. The project is a series of, of 11 installations um, from 11 chosen definitions and each definition written by Adam Phillips has a sartorial, a, a psychological and a spatial dimension. I would give her the definitions which I wrote without consultation and I wrote more than we used and the ones that worked for her we included in the exhibition and working for her meant they actually made her imagine a combination of objects that in her mind were connected with these words. When thinking about storage and storing ideas about dress, uh, Blythe House, which is the storage uh, to the v &A, the Science Museum and the British Museum, was an obvious and excessive choice. The sort of visitor's imagination is already fired just on entering the building. Blythe House, both symbolically and really, is the perfect place for this exhibition and makes the exhibition real in a completely different way because it makes conservation a salient theme, whatever else is going on. The thing about the project is to take the visitor on a very precise route uh, around the building and, and see as many types of storage uh, spaces as possible. The 11 homes to, to installations, if you like. In the case of the word conformist, the word has taken William Morris and what William Morris's designs as a sort of motif. We've uh, reconstructed a design for wallpaper, designed by and painted by, by William Morris. And the Victor and Albert Museum hold the, the designs for, for that wallpaper. I think a lot of people associate uh, William Morris with the, the Victor and Albert Museum. Not only the room where we're, we're sitting, but they, they come across him a lot. There are a number of books in the bookshop. I mean, he's, he's around. There's something of William Morris's uh, aesthetic that has always been very present. I think with Conformist it was more about thinking about the idea of taste associated with the v &A rather than specific objects. And I think that Windrush incorporated a lot of those ideas rather than choosing Windrush as a sketch and wondering how to exhibit it. For all of them are a dialogue between dress and environment. Conformist was about merging those two, so it wasn't about either object, if you like, but about ideas of translation. Whereas I think with, with some of the other installations, it's more about the object itself. I looked through a huge number of, uh, of William Morris patterns to try and understand more of his, his visual language. And I had uh, very long conversations with, with Rosie Taylor Davis about that. Uh, having chosen Windrush, then we spent a, a long time uh, discussing what Morris was doing with, with Windrush. It said William Morris for a start, so people would recognise it and need to be instantly recognisable. Um, yet it was sufficiently not a commonly known design, so there was something interesting in it for it being not commonly known. But also it was key that it would be able to be embroidered in an appropriate way and would read well as embroidery, where some of his um, designs are too involved and not appropriate, they wouldn't read from a distance. 
I think there are two things about the word conformist. One is that everybody is conforming to something, even if they're conforming to the idea of being non-conformist. The second thing is that conformism tends to have a pejorative connotation, whereas in actuality it needn't have that. One way of describing Morris's work would be to say that he wanted to encourage us to conform to certain standards of craftsmanship and skill. Those aren't conformism in the sense of submission or being servile. That's literally about learning an art form as a discipline. So it'd be conforming to the criteria of acceptable work or beautiful work or whatever. We had to try and work out how to put it onto the wall in a meaningful way, standing with the mannequin and how that would work. So working in less detail at the edges and bringing it into a more focal point in the middle. We were very keen to make sure that the tile that we produced, although it was going to be digitally uh, printed, that it looked hand-drawn. So we've left in the fact that it isn't perfect, you know, there are smudges in it and it's not perfectly clean background. We used quite a soft pencil and worked quite a lot into the points of the peony so that it looks slightly different. And whereas you can, with a pencil line, just draw in all of these varying branches and they look fine, when you're drawing them in with gold, it's not so straightforward because they can look quite clumsy. So trying to keep the delicate nature of it in the embroidery does take quite some work. I wanted conformist to be a more interesting idea. And I also wanted it to evoke, at its most minimal, something to do with uniform both uniformity, but also the wearing of uniforms. You know, it's, what is, it seems to me you could tell a lot about a person from what they have chosen to conform with and what they have felt they had to conform with. So those were the kind of ideas that were around in my mind. And I wanted in a way to open it up as a word that we shouldn't take for granted.